Hi, my name is Jessica Nishikawa. I'm going to be demonstrating a few of the basic techniques of the abdominal assessment today. These videos are meant to supplement your learning and are not intended to be completely comprehensive or replace your readings or lectures. Hi Miley, I'm going to be um, performing your abdominal exam today. Can you go ahead and pull your shirt up for me? Good, I'm going to be speaking again for the students so that they can um, hear me and know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm starting with inspection, just inspecting her abdomen um, for the shape, uh, looking for um, any pulsations, any movements, pulsations from the aorta, uh, the peristaltic, um, peristalsis or the, the waves of the, um, of the bowels, which a lot of times you can see. Then obviously you can see her breaths as she breathes in and out. Uh, next, the next part um, of the abdominal assessment after observation is auscultation. Uh, so I'm going to grab my stethoscope and I'm listening for bowel sounds in each quadrant. So we like to break up the abdomen into four quadrants. The right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. And you're, again, you're listening for the tinkling and pingling, um, tinkering and pinging of bowel sounds. There should be between 5 and 30 per minute. Um, while I'm auscult auscultating, I can listen over the spleen and over the, um, and over the liver for any splenic or, um, or liver hepatic uh, friction rubs. So on the right-hand side, the splenic rubs, I'm going to use the bell and listen for any hepatic friction rubs. And then going to move over to the other side and listen for any splenic rubs. Good. Next I'm going to listen to the aorta, which branches down right above her, ab uh, right above her umbilicus. With both the bell and the diaphragm. The aorta then splits off into the iliac arteries and the renal arteries. So iliac and then f branches down further to the femoral. So here I listen to the femoral artery here and femoral artery on this side with again both the bell and the diaphragm. Listening for any vascular sounds like bruies which are going to be um, turbulent sounds. Uh, the, the next part after auscultation is going to be palpation or percussion. Um, we're going to start with percussion. Percussion is a technique that has, um, requires some skill and some practice, um, but generally you take your dominant finger, your right hand dom or your um, middle finger of your dominant hand, in this case it's my right hand, uh, and you strike the distal um, joint of your um, non-dominant hand middle finger. And it's a quick strike, 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 and then lift up so that you don't dull the noise. So I'm going to lightly just percuss in all four quadrants of her belly, listening for the, for the tympanic sound, which is that sound of a drum, because in her belly is, is a lot of air, and there shouldn't be fluid or any um, structures that cause it to be dull. Uh, I'm going to percuss for um, the liver border. So I'm going to start in the midclavicular line around the uh, umbilicus and percuss upward until it changes from um, tympanic to a dull sound. Once you hear that dull sound, you can mark that level and then again start superiorly, go between the rib margins because the ribs, if you, palp if you percuss the ribs, they're going to be uh, dull sounding. So you want to percuss in between the ribs until you hear the dullness and then you want to mark um, that liver border. Uh, it should be between anywhere between um, four and seven centimeters or so. You can do the same thing on the spleen side. Uh, it's harder to percuss the borders of the spleen because uh, the spleen is located completely under the ribs and off to the side. Um, so what you can do is uh, in the, um, around the 10th rib, sorry, my hands are really cold, Miley. Around the 10th intercostal space, so count the ribs. You know the bottom rib is the 12th rib. Count up, 11, 10, 10th rib. In that 10th intercostal space in the, um, anterior axillary line, so the anterior axillary line, uh, you can percuss here
and you're percussing to see if that's dull. If it's dull, um, and then you can have the patient take a deep breath in and percuss again. Good, and now it's in panic. So that, that um, spleen is shifting up so there's no splenic enlargement. And the next part after um, you percuss the abdomen is uh, to palpate the abdomen. I'm going to start with light palpation. Again, I'm using just the pads of my fingers um, and lightly palpating in the right upper quadrant and the left upper quadrant and then the right lower quadrant and the left lower quadrant. The light palpation gets the patient used to your touch, gets any of the giggles out, gets the coldness of your hands, gets them familiar with that, um, and, and it allow, allows their muscles to relax in their stomach so that you can then go ahead and do some deeper palpation. In the right upper quadrant, when you deep palpate, you're gonna deeply palpate for any of the structures there. And the main structure that's here is the liver and the gallbladder right behind the liver. So you're gonna press down and um, press, and then press up towards the costal margins. You can see Miley's ribs clearly here. So you wanna press down and then up underneath the ribs to try to feel uh, the liver border. You can have the patient take a deep breath in and that liver will sometimes come down and that border will, will hit your, the tip of your finger. You can then go to the left upper quadrant and do the same thing. Press down and try to um, go underneath the rib margins to see if you feel any spleen. Uh, a splenic border here is not a normal finding, so uh, you shouldn't actually be able to palpate the spleen. If you can, that means the spleen is enlarged. Deep palpation again in the right lower quadrant. The main structure that's down here is appendix. There's also bowel. Um, in the left lower quadrant, a deep palpation, going to feel um, the colon. Uh, so a lot of times that can be tender. It shouldn't be real painful, but there is some tenderness associated with palpating that colon area. Other techniques with um, feeling the uh, liver is called the hooking technique. Um, it's hard for me to demonstrate um, in this position, so I'll show you. I'll show it to you on her um, left-hand side, which is obviously not where her liver is. Um, but you take your fingers and you actually hook them underneath the costal margins, and you're hooking up this way. So you can actually see that's her rib right there, and I'm just hooking my fingers underneath her ribs, underneath the costal margins right here. Uh, and, and then I would have her take a deep breath and try to feel that liver border as it comes down and bumps against my fingers, which again, liver is not on the left side, it's on the right side, and you should all know that. Um, while I'm pressing, another um, special test that you can do is called um, Murphy's sign. It's a test for uh, cholecystitis. While you're deeply pressing down in the right upper quadrant and pressing for that um, liver, you can have the patient take a really deep breath, take a deep breath, and if, they're, if the pain is so severe that it causes them to cease their inspiration, so it's a, a, a cessation of inspiration um, due to pain, that means that there could be some uh, inflammation in the gallbladder. So if the patient is unable to take a deep breath while you're palpating deeply in that right upper quadrant, that can um, indicate some cholecystitis or gallbladder inflammation. Moving down to her right lower quadrant, some of the special tests you can do is find the ASIS or the anterior superior iliac spine, the hip bone on, this, on the anterior side, and then find her um, belly button or her umbilicus. About two thirds of the way down between the imaginary line between the ASIS and the umbilicus is what we call Murph, um, McBurney's point. That's the part, that's the point where um, the gallbladder sits right below. So deep pressing in there uh, can sometimes reveal um, pain, which may be associated to appendicitis if the patient has other clinical symptoms that, that um, indicate appendicitis. Other tests that you can do for appendicitis include rebound test. Um, rebound is when you press deeply into the stomach and then you suddenly re uh, let go and you ask the patient which hurt more. And if the um, internal, if the initial pressure hurt more or if once you let go of your hands, if that rebound is what hurt more. A special test called Rovsing's is when you do a rebound test on this left side. So you press in on the left side and you let go suddenly, if that causes pain on the right side over that McBurney's point area, then um, it's indicative of a potential for appendicitis. The next test is called the iliopsoas sign. It's also a test for um, appendicitis or for peritoneal inflammation. I'm going to have uh, you press your thigh against my hand. Good. 
go ahead and flex your knee a little bit and press up against my hand. Good. If that caused pain uh, in her in this area, again, you could also test the other side against. Go ahead and press up against my hand. Good. If that causes pain, then it's likely that the patient has some peritonitis or peritoneal inflammation. Uh, the next test is the obturator sign. I'm going to have Miley flex her knee, and then I'm just going to internally rotate and externally rotate that knee. If that causes any discomfort or pain uh, in that in that abdominal area um, of McBurney's point, then that can indicate uh, appendicitis or um, peritonitis. There's one more um, series of special tests, and those special tests are uh, to assess for ascites, which you can obviously see that Miley does not have any ascites. Um, but if you did suspect a patient had ascites, you could do, um, you could percuss the board. So percuss around the abdomen. You would expect that the protuberant abdomen up here would be tympanic because it would be all air filled. Um, because as the patient lays down, the fluid from the ascites would shift to each lower area. So then you would percuss the um, flank or the, the um, borders on each side, and that would be dull because that's where the fluid sits. You would then have the patient roll to one side. Good. And when a patient who has ascites then, the fluid that was here has now shifted and is all down on the dependent side because fluid goes where it's dependent. So then you would then again percuss um, the flank here and you would expect it to be uh, tympanic uh, because the fluid has now shifted. Go ahead and relax. The last test for ascites is the fluid wave. If the patient had a round protuberant abdomen, I would take um, the patient's hand or um, or a nurse's hand and press it in the midline of their abdomen right here. And this is just gonna help um, keep other structures from going from one side to the other and not the fluid. With my hands, with my right hand, uh, I'm going to sharply push on the fluid on one side and, and look to see if it causes a wave or a slap on the other side. So with one hand, I would push in at her stomach and feel the fluid then tra travels through the stomach uh, over to the other side of my hand. And that's the fluid shift test or the fluid wave test for ascites. That concludes our abdomen exam. Do you have any questions for me? No. Okay. Thank you.